What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm bringing to you my updated Forza GT tier list for Forza Motorsport. I made a video about this about a month ago, initially placing all of these cars where they belong, but I have some small tweaks I want to make and I need to cover the four new cars that we got since I made that last video. But before we get started, as always, if you find videos like these helpful, drop a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. But let's not waste any more time and let's get started. So first I'm going to go over the changes I would make to my first tier list. So I'm going to start with the M8. Now this car is very good, uh, but the two cars I had below it are just that little bit better the more I drove them. So the C8 is just a bit quicker on pace and the extra tire wear really doesn't come into effect that much. And the Porsche is pretty close, but I found something interesting with this car where if you're on zero laps of fuel, the car just gains way more time than any other car, like a few tenths at least. So from that alone, I'm going to have to bump the M8 down. Uh, it's still in the strong category for sure. It's a very good car, and it's really within the noise for these three cars at the bottom of the strong category. They're that close. Just The M8 is that slight bit behind the other two. Um, the next one will be the 4 GT, and a lot of people have uh, requested me to try this car, and even though I still don't get on with it that well, I do have to admit it is a good pick, at least for me, better than the M6. And I think I'm going to promote it to the strong category at the very bottom. Not quite as good as the cars above it, but it's good enough and close enough to where it could be considered a strong pick. Um, the top end is really good on that car. The acceleration isn't great, but it's overall a solid pick and you can't go wrong with it. Um, what's next? Um, I, I'm going to go with the Aston actually. In this car, I had high hopes for it, but... The top end really, really hampers this car, and it, while it does have really good exit speed and handling characteristics, it just doesn't quite make up for some of its other shortcomings. So I'm going to bump this one down quite a bit, and I'll talk about some of the other cars in front of it shortly. But the Aston definitely moves down the list a little bit. Um, the next one is the Lambo, and this car, like the Aston, will also be moving down the list quite a bit. Um, if Maple Valley or Hakone aren't in the rotation, this car is not very good. And if those cars weren't in the rotation, I would probably put it in the weaker category. But just because of how strong this car is at those two tracks, and it can kind of hold its own with the rest, I'm going to leave it in decent, but it's going to go to the very bottom. Uh, not quite weaker, but uh, ju just good enough to hang on. Next, uh, the C7 is actually quite good. Um, I, I've tried this car more and more and it does lack a lot on the straights, but overall it is a pretty strong car. It's very comparable to um, how I thought the Aston was, but I'm actually getting a bit more success out of this car than the Aston. really depends on the track. So I'm going to move this right in front of the Aston. I think the top end is just a little bit better. It, I think the Aston actually accelerates better but the top end makes the C7 a little more versatile on some of the longer tracks. So I would prefer the C7 over the Aston just by a little bit. Now, one car that I slept on a lot, and people told me this, and I didn't believe them, but I admit I was very wrong about this car, is the Bentley. The Bentley is a very, very good car. Uh, I just had to spend a lot of time with it, getting it hooked up on the setup, but once I did, I was very, very impressed with some of the lap times it could do. Uh, it, it still has its inherent flaws, like I mentioned last time. It really suffers on top end. It's not the grippiest car, and it does chew through tires pretty quickly, but on some more point-and-shoot tracks and tracks that don't have super long straightaways, this car can hang with some of the strong cars on lap times. Um, just because it's a little weaker on tracks like Hakone, Le Mans, anything with a long straight, and the tires uh, go a bit quicker than the other cars, I'm going to bump it up to the middle of decent category. It's really good on pace, just it has those few glaring weaknesses that prevent it from being a strong car. And then finally, I'm going to go through the V8s. Uh, the V8s, they're actually not horrible, but they do have similar weaknesses to the Bentley, just a little more extreme even, um, mainly the tire wear. And they, they actually have worse traction than the Bentley. They have some of the worst traction coming out of slow corners out of any of these cars. So it's kind of difficult to drive them and race them. But they have probably the best straight line speed out of every car in this class because of how much power they have. Um, the order of these three has not changed. But 
The Ford has been competent enough to where I feel that it can be bumped up into the decent category. It can set some really quick lap times at tracks like Hockenheim, Yas Marina, which is very surprising, but a lot of acceleration-based tracks that don't need a ton of uh, exit traction. Uh, this car does pretty well, but I, I've tried it at tracks like Suzuka and like coming out of the hairpin is an absolute nightmare with this car. So it does suffer at some tracks, but it is competent enough that it can be a decent pick. Um, the other two have to stay in the weaker category just because they're noticeably slower and they have the same problems. Um, and I guess I should go over the 2015 Porsche too, because uh, th this car is still one of the worst in the division. It, it, it is actually okay on a lap. You can actually get some surprisingly decent lap times with it, but the amount of work you have to put in to get it between setup and then just driving the car on a knife's edge, it, it's just not worth it. it if it handled more uh, gently and it didn't try to kill you every time you drove it, it could probably be at the top of weak or maybe in the bottom of decent, but it's going to have to stay in the avoid category. Uh, unless you like uh, punishing yourself, I would avoid this car. And that pretty much covers the initial listing. Now we can finally move on to the new cars, which for the most part, they're actually a solid addition to this division. I'm pretty happy with these. So I guess we'll just go in order from the bottom that, that we have here. And the first one will be the C7 Trans Am car. Um, I, I know a lot of people are like, why is this in GT? It, it's a Trans Am car, it's not a GT. It doesn't make sense. That being said, I am actually liking this car a lot. Um, I, I think it has a good place in GT with how they've balanced it, even though it's not quite the same. Um, I, I think it's a great car, honestly. It, it does really good lap times. Its acceleration is very good. It has the same problem as the Challenger, where the, it falls on its face because of all the downforce for top end, but it actually has better top end than the Challenger. So the Challenger is actually at the very top of decent because it does very good lap times on short tracks. Um, and the Corvette is no different, but it actually has that bit of top end that puts it over the Challenger. So I'm actually going to put this at the very bottom of the strong category. It's a very solid car. Um, the one big weakness on it besides the top end is the launch is not very good. It has a lot of wheel spin. And if you, uh, want your first gear to be usable, cause there's only a five speed gearbox versus a six in most of these cars, um, you need to make first gear quite long. So you either have to spam the clutch to get it going or you just have an unusable first gear and you only have four gears to use on track. So that's something to consider with this car, but once you get it dialed in and used to it, it is quite good. And next, oh boy, um, I'm surprised it took them this long to put this car in, but now I see why. Um, the KTM GT2, uh, this car is a menace. It is an absolute rocket ship on the straights. Um, it's not too bad in the corners either. Uh, it's also very light. I think it's the second lightest car, only to its little brother, the GT4. But um, yeah, this this car is absolutely insane. Um, any track that depends on acceleration is one of the best cars. And even on tracks that don't, it can hang with any other handling car. So this car is going in the OP category. It is very close to the Audi on pace. Not quite there. But on some tracks um, that have top speed or are just mostly acceleration based, it is just as good as the Audi. Um, it, it's not as frowned upon as the Audi because it is quite the basket case to drive. Um, kind of reminds me of Hydro Thunder when you pick a really uh, fast boat that's hard to handle and the announcer says, You're crazy! But yeah, th this car is very rewarding if you can get a handle on it and get a good setup on it. Much harder to drive than the Audi, but definitely in a similar realm of pace. So if you haven't tried it yet, uh, give it a go and see what you can do with it because it is extremely fast. Next, we're going to talk about the McLaren. Now this one, it's a little disappointing for me because they, they always make these weird balancing decisions with cars that don't need it. This car is just too heavy for what it should be. It, it's okay in the corners. It's okay on the straights. That, that just sums up the experience with this car. Everything is just okay. Um, I, I think it drives okay. <laughs> As I said, everything's just okay. Like There's, there's nothing stellar about it. Nothing uh, that's a deal breaker. It's just a very mediocre car across the board. So for that reason, I'm going to throw this into 
the decent category right about here. Right, behind, I, I'm actually placing it behind the V8 because the V8 is actually that quick on some tracks. But you could argue that it could go here or maybe a bit in front of the Aston. But I'm not a huge fan of this car. Um, so I'm going to leave it down here. It, that's not to say that it's noticeably below any of these cars um, in the middle of decent. They're all very, very close to each other. But that's where I'm going to place this car. Just not super pleased with it. And then finally, we have the AMG. This one's been a fan favorite. Everybody's been wanting this car, even though it's an old one, which is a shame. But um, a lot of people like driving this car, and for good reason. Um, it's, it's not quite as heavy as the McLaren, but it's still on the heavier end. Um, it does have a good amount of power. It has phenomenal top end. This car just keeps pulling and pulling the faster you go. Um, some cars that out accelerate it in the low end will get absolutely destroyed by this thing once you hit above like 140, 150 miles an hour. Um, it handles pretty well. It's quite easy to drive. You can get it out of shape if you try, but it's actually a pretty calm car to drive. Um, that seems to be a common theme with a lot of these front engine cars in GT category, but um, yeah, it, it's it's just a good car all around. It sets good lap times, uh, no real weaknesses. It does go through tires a little quicker than I would like, but nothing egregious at all. So this car is going to go into the strong category right behind the M8. Not quite as good as those few cars in front of it, but it's very close and definitely a strong pick for multiplayer. And that's about it. Um, this is the revised list. Um, I know we have some more cars coming in the near future. Um, I try not to update this constantly because uh, it's it would be too often to do this like weekly or anything like that. So I'm trying to leave some time in between updates just so we have a few new cars to talk about each time we go through this. Um, but yeah, this is the new list for now. Um, if you guys have any comments about this list, if you agree, disagree, what have you, then put those comments down below. And that's about all I got for this one. So. Thanks everyone for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.